Hello there, World of Tankers, and welcome to the channel. I'm, of course, your host, the Drodals Blitz, and in today's video, we are going to be talking about the FV217 Badger. This is a Tier 10 Collector British Tank Destroyer, a vehicle known for high DPM, quite beefy alpha, actually, and incredible frontal armor. Unfortunately, the Badger falls off in almost every other category. It's incredibly slow. Its side armor is very weak. If you get to its rear, it's an HE party. So, yeah, the Badger's not the best in every situation. However, in update 9.1... I would be willing to say that the Badger might be one of the best tier 10s in the game. Out of all of the changes that we're seeing happen to 9.1, the Badger, I would say, is the largest by far. First of all, its hull's reverse speed is getting increased by 10 degrees a second. It's going from the current 30 degrees a second to 40. That's a 25% buff, and it's going to make the vehicle insanely more mobile and flexible for dealing with enemies on its side or just turning to get a snap shot off, it's going to be way better. Its reload time is getting decreased by one second, meaning that its DPM is going to skyrocket up from the already very high 3,450. The armor thickness on the hull sides will be increased by 25 millimeters. Now, I do want to point out that when the game says hull sides, they're kind of being a little deceiving here. The actual superstructure, you can see my mouse going over, this whole top part is not getting increased. It's the lower part, but that's fine with me because the track wheel is still getting thicker, and that is one of the biggest weaknesses in the Badger, is the fact that you can very easily track it and penetrate it in the track wheel. So, the Badger's not only getting a harder track wheel to penetrate, but it's going to be able to turn faster, making it harder to hit that track wheel to begin with. And the only real nerf it's getting is an increased dispersion value by 0.02, which, let's be real, is almost a negligent and redundant nerf on its, uh, its dispersion that won't make a difference in the battlefield. So, with all of those changes listed, you might be wondering how much DPM the Badger is going to be sitting at. So, in Blitzhanger, I've actually been able to apply some crew skills, with Rage and Adrenaline Rush to artificially increase the DPM to what it's going to be next update with around a 7.05 second reload, which it currently sits at 8 seconds. So, it's going to have 3,900 damage per minute. Yeah, you heard that right. 3,900 DPM. This will be the highest DPM tier 10 heavy tank destroyer, whatever you want to call it, in the game. It's going to be ridiculously powerful. And with that traverse speed and as well the increased side armor, yeah, the Badger is going to be one formidable opponent on the battlefield. When it comes to the buffs the Badger is receiving on 9.1, I'm actually kind of teetering on the edge, and I think that the tank might actually be too good when it does get these buffs. Now, why is that? Well, currently the Badger has a couple weaknesses. The weaknesses it has is poor traverse speed and poor track wheels. The fact that if this tank is turning towards you and you have the ability to shoot it in the track wheel, most of the time you'll penetrate it. That's a really big problem this tank has. It's the same problem the FE2 and 5B and the Super Conqueror have. British tanks in general have terrible track wheels. You can always penetrate them whenever they try turning or even trying to side scrape. It's just really hard to get away with a good side scrape in a British heavy unless you're really, really trying to work it in. And that's the same case with the Badger. And when you don't have a traversable turret, it create situations like that, where if I had that extra 10 degrees of traverse speed there, I probably would have penned that WZ-121B. So, as I said, the weakness this tank has is, first of all, a very weak track wheel, which is getting buffed by 25 millimeters next update. But not only is it getting a track wheel buff, but it's also getting traverse speed buff. The Badger's gaining 10 degrees a second from 30 to 40, which is a 25% buff. So, those two things go hand in hand. If you're able to turn your tank more towards the enemy because of your 10 degrees increased traverse, that also means your track wheel is going to be harder to hit, and it's going to be more towards the enemy opponent, making it harder to penetrate because of the increased angle, and easier for you to shoot the opponent because you've turned more towards them. Either way, that's huge for the Badger, and that's taking away one of its major, major weaknesses. Apart from that, there really aren't any other weaknesses for the Badger. It's got a lot of hit points for a tank destroyer at 2,000 base. If you're running hit point buff, 2,120, although I'm actually running armor because I like to get those bounces when I'm running it hull down. But yeah, I would say right now that's really the only weakness of the Badger. And 
let me put in another take as an example. The T-54 E2 Shark is an American Tier 8 heavy premium take, and when the Shark first came out, I called it overpowered because I couldn't really come up with a weakness the vehicle had. Let's talk about the Shark's weaknesses. Okay, it's got great top speed, 40 plus kilometers per hour. It's got really good DPM, really good accuracy, 10 degrees of gun depression, basically the same armor as the T-125, a Tier 10 heavy, and uh, it doesn't even have the turret weak spots the E5 has. So what weakness does the Shark have? Can you penetrate it with HE in the rear? No, it has literally no weakness. Maybe when you get it caught out in the open, it's weak, but let's be real, any heavy tank caught out in the open, even on IS-7, is going to be punished. So when it comes to the Badger, I sort of see it the same way. When Wargaming gives it this many buffs on all of the weaknesses it has, I honestly feel like it's going to be too strong. But I guess we're going to have to find out when the vehicle is eventually introduced into the game. Let me know what you guys think about the Badger's changes in the comments down below because I really want to know. But I do want to point out, I'm not saying no to these changes by any means. I am fully happy with the Badger getting these buffs because if anything, I want to see an absolutely cracked haul down tank destroyer. This might be the first tank destroyer that can actually do really, really well in tier 10. With the 10 degrees of gun depression plus the 4000 DPM and the great penetration and accuracy. I mean, again... There's, there's going to be no weakness, which is just going to be so fun. But I fully support the idea of giving it 4K DPM. If we take a look at the Tortoise line, down at Tier 7, we have the AT-7. That tank is sitting at around 3,400 DPM. Really solid for a Tier 7 tank destroyer. It's actually the most in the game for a Tier 7. When we take a look at the Tier 8, the AT-15, wow, 4,000 DPM. And if we take a look at the tier 9 being the Tortoise, it also has 4,000 DPM. So it just makes sense that the Badger should be sitting at a similar value compared to its other counterparts. Now sure, the Badger's a collector and it's not actually on the line, but on World of Tanks PC, the Badger is the successor to the the tortoise, which makes sense. I mean, they look incredibly similar, and their armor profiles are similar, except this one doesn't have a big old hatch on the roof like the other tanks in the line. So, uh, yeah, Badger is really just a tank that you're gonna have to be worried about on the battlefield next update. I honestly think it might be a comp tank. When you give a vehicle this many good things going for it, how do you counter it? Like, uh, if you go in the Hellas dip, what are you gonna do? YOLO it? I mean, it's gonna be 4,000 DPM focused on your, your heavy. You're gonna be absolutely incinerated. It's gonna take 35 seconds, and with adrenaline on, like, 25 seconds to kill uh, a full health mouse. So, yeah, I'm, a. Uh... I'm excited. I'm excited to see what's going to happen to the Badger. Either way, hopefully you enjoyed today's video. I'm I'm very intrigued. Right now, the Badger, I wouldn't say it's a necessarily bad tank, but I also wouldn't say it's a good tank. It's got decent DPM, decent accuracy, but it's just very slow. So when Wargaming gives it this traverse plus the armor and the DPM, whoo, I'm going to spam this tank. I already have a lot of battles in the vehicle, maybe around 500, so... Yeah, either way, hopefully you enjoyed today's video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.